without a further ado, I will get into the topic right away. So I'd like to start with ultrasound technology in, in enhancements, because that's actually where many, many events and changes have taken place in the last few years. If you look at the screen uh, that I'm sharing with you, on the right-hand side, there is one of the new releases of a modern ultrasound machine. You can see it highly mobile and uh, compact, but it's only compact in size. The features that you can see here in this, in this machine are 2D, 3D ultrasound, uh, has a facility to tell you the uterine in, in, in a 3D environment with, for example, in the top right corner, there's an intrauterine device, there is a fibroid on the right-hand side. But if you look at the uh, circular picture, colorful picture, uh, picture that's what um, a software called Sono AVC, which essentially uh, determines and outlines all the follicles that you have in a stimulated ovary, gives them colors, measure their, uh, their diameters and volumes automatically. If you look at obstetric packages, you have all sorts of abilities to measure head circumference and, and, and uh, various diameters automatically, gives you planes, gives you cutouts so that you can see different planes at the same time while you're doing the scan. And another one, for example, the fetal spine with a special type of rendering where you're doing a scan in the usual way, but at the same time, you see the spine uh, in a 3D picture and you can look entirety of the spine of an early uh, pregnancy or 14, 18 week fetus, and you could determine if the spine is normal or not. Now that machine to the top right, the price of it is phenomenal. Machine like that, three probes, in the UK, it's about 26, 28,000 pounds. I have not seen such a price uh, with that low uh, uh, you know, cost. Now you look at the other end of the spectrum, you look at the top end machine, and you can see here even better quality picture, even more gadgets. And if you look at the beating heart, that is a phenomenal functional ability to look at the fetal heart beating. And if you can see arrhythmias and all sorts of contractility issues in the fetal heart. So these are uh, technologies that are incre increasingly becoming popular. They are embedding artificial intelligence, like for example, in this, in this machine, top right, there's an artificial intelligence software that determines whether you have taken the correct plane of the fetal head or not. So if you are a sonographer and you want to audit your work, you can look at all what you've done and the system will tell you what you have done is, is correct or not major improvements in the last few years. Fusion ultrasound is another area where you fuse the MRI images and ultrasound images, especially in gynecology, uh, simultaneously seeing both at the same time. And of course, what's happening is that probe technology has improved the ability to process the images and give us the, uh, the, the, the matrix probes, give us much better quality images. So if we look at other advances, connectivity is one big thing nowadays. And if you look at the top picture on the right, you'll find that this software connects you as a clinician to the patients. And that basically, you can send them all the images you have taken of their babies. They can review them, they can download them, they can do whatever they like with them. So it's a you and your patients connected uh, for the better care. Uh, there is 3D printing, so if you are interested in uh, uh, sending a full baby in a rendered surface rendered picture, you 3D print it and, and give it as a souvenir to your patients. That's also possible with some of these new machines. But the point of care ultrasound is, is where things are going to change dramatically. So size does not matter if you look at this particular type of uh, ultrasound machine, it's called Butterfly, it's handheld on the iPhone, and it has embedded in it 
a lot of technology, AI um, uh, facilitated scanning, and gives you all sorts of things. And what's happening here is that the manufacturers of this particular make are uh, make it available and A number of software, a number of applications uh, happening in this. So technology is moving so fast, ultrasound is becoming more available, but, and this is a big but, advances in ultrasound technology must be underpinned by sound academic knowledge, robust practical training, because you want to ensure safe an effective clinical practice. That's where we need to have that clearly understood worldwide. So in the last two years, I've been actively involved in, in uh, editing uh, books in relation to ultrasound and reproductive medicine. One book was published back in September last year, but it's counted as 2021 publication. And that's ultrasound in assisted reproduction and early pregnancy. Uh, the other book is nearly uh, ready to be published, and that's on endometriosis, current topics in diagnosis and management. And the reason why, why I'm involved because of my imaging interest, of course, I'm a laparoscopic surgeon as well, as well as reproductive medicine, with my PhD being in reproductive endocrinology and IVF many years ago. So the purpose of integrating imaging with, with, with gynecology, with uh, assisted reproduction, fertility is quite obvious. And for example, endometriosis in one particular area where we have a, a phenomenal problem here in the West, and that's because the diagnosis is delayed, uh, the people arrive or patients arrive to the expert centers at a late stage, and therefore, Laparoscopy, for example, which is regarded in the UK and Europe as a gold standard, I don't know other countries how it works, but it's an operation and it phenomenally cannot detect deep endometriosis because it's hiding behind adhesions, hiding behind the, the uterus. So how can you see it with laparoscopy when you can a lot easier see it through, uh, through, through uh, imaging? And that's where ultrasound and MRI are useful to look for bowel infiltration, to look for high endometriosis around the ureters elsewhere. And just last week, uh, we organized through the European Society of Gynecological Endoscopy. Uh, I was one of the uh, moderators for the session, bringing a group of luminaries together and essentially with the purpose of how can we embed imaging in the, in the uh, pathway, care pathway of patients. So ultrasound or MRI and what be works best for bowel endometriosis, endometriosis around the ureters and so forth. How can we incorporate imaging as part of the currently uh, fashionable classification of endometriosis and that's the Enzian classification. Another area where uh, imaging has been uh, uh, phenomenally useful and that's MRI and basically uh, determining the exact presence, exact position, uh, number and, 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 and size of the fibroids in the uterus determines to a great extent what treatment options can you offer the patient, medical, minimally invasive or major surgery. In COVID times in the UK, and that I can only speak for my information about UK and, and Europe, surgery, elective surgery has practically stopped. And that is putting a lot of pressure uh, on patients because they need support, they need help, and they can't get it through the usual routes. Another area where ultrasound has been playing an important part in the clinical management is that uh, in pelvic pain. And 
may sound strange, but yes, ultrasound does play as an important role in pelvic pain because uh, pelvic pain is not only gynecological, pelvic pain is gastroenterology, urology, psychology, uh, and so forth. And therefore, uh, knowing what the pelvis look like and what the imaging shows you is going to be phenomenally important to, uh, to, to, to define what is the best management option for the patient. Of course, imaging has been incorporated as uh, for the classification of uterine anomalies in the recent European Society of Human Reproduction and Endocrinology and European Society of Gynecological Endoscopy joint classification. And you can see the importance of the, um, of the uh, ultrasound, 3D ultrasound and MRI in this, in this uh, classification being an integral part. Another area, in, uh, particularly in obstetrics, where imaging ultrasound has been uh, phenomenally transformative in the past few years is that for early pregnancy using the transvaginal route. And you will see in this picture, which is taken from one of my colleagues' contribution in the book on ultrasound in early pregnancy, you can see the phenomenally clear details of this early fetus. And you can do uh, viability, dating, normal anatomy, uh, and, and depending on the, the rendering techniques you use, you do measurements, but also importantly, that it has played an important part in fetal medicine, where you detect many malformations as early as 10 to 14 weeks, and gives you the opportunity to offer the correct treatment for these patients. Moving on more to reproductive medicine developments in the last few years, uh, I have been uh, fortunate to be part of a number of working groups within the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology. And this particular working group was on ultrasound oocyte pickup, uh, sorry, the days of you know, on ultrasound quality and safety issues and uh, procedures and standards for uh, egg collections, oocyte pickups. And we uh, you can see the list of uh, European partners in the, in the, in the uh, workshop. And here we are in a picture together. I'm circled with my colleague, Dr. D'Angelo, who was leading on that project, but she's also uh, a member of our faculty for the assisted reproduction and reproductive medicine course. And we have produced a number of uh, you know, uh, guidelines in relation to uh, quality, in relation to safety, in relation to technique, whether before the ovum pickup, uh, preparation for ovum. And you can see here the whole journey, the steps uh, involved and for each one of them, you have, uh, you have guidelines and you have quality assurance, training and competence, and uh, clinical governance principles. And like here, you, you, you put the uh, prior to oven pickup, what you should do during oven pickup, what you should do, You're looking at the baseline scan, looking at oocytes of follicle count during, and that, that guideline integrated well with the ovarian stimulation for IVF and ICSI because then ultrasound forms an integral part of the uh, monitoring process of ovarian response and therefore you want to look at endometrial thickness and its compatibility with hormone uh, time of the cycle etc. So also of course uh, to look at whether you identify intracavity lesions, polyps and how they uh, and how they appear, what's their relevance, what, what time in the cycle is the best to look at them, and what to do if you see them before treatment. And of course, uh, you, you probably have to take them out if they are big enough to impact on the outcome of treatment. And uh, in the, in the uh, workup of women going through fertility treatment, you have the saline hysteroscopy to look at the cavity, to look at intrauterine adhesions, to look at the patency of the fallopian tubes. All these require good sound knowledge and practical experience 
in ultrasound. And of course, here you can see it's a 3D image of uh, saline, high, uh, saline hysteroscopy showing you a uterine septum affecting the, uh, the cavity. So protocols play an important part, not only for uh, collections, but also for the uh, treatment schedules in assisted reproduction. And you want to achieve your best possible outcome by using a tailored protocol for the individual concerned. Of course, you see all forms of uh, adnexal masses, say for example, uh, simple cyst, uh, dermoid cyst, solid dermoids, uh, and, and so forth. Endometriomas, paraovarian, sometimes are mistaken for, an, for ovarian cysts, and that's why you need to understand the anatomy, the ultrasound anatomy, and the correlation between the real and the ultrasound anatomy. We talked about endometriomas, so we're not going to go through that again. Of course, uh, dermoid cysts have impact on fertility, and therefore you need to understand the consequences of removing dermoid cysts, especially on the woman's reproductive health, if her uh, surgery leads to a drop in the available oocytes. <laughs> And uh, of course, of course, you you have the hydrosalpings as uh, as an impact on outcome. It's well documented that it reduces the chance of success, and therefore you you have to determine that actually before treatment and decide what to do. So all these and. Uh, complications that can happen before and during ovum pickup need to be well uh, documented and taken into context during your uh, workup and treatment. So other areas that are phenomenally important to remember are quality indicators in ultrasound practice and in assisted reproduction. And it's a, you can see in this cartoon to the right, it's from the New Yorker magazine. Uh, magazine and um, I thought I'll <clears throat> illustrate to you, we as clinicians have a tendency to be pleased with what we do. And you look at this uh, king who has been shooting his arrows at random and actually you, disc and you think that he's getting it right every time, but actually what you can see, he is missing everything and he's got his uh, understudy there circling with a paint around each arrow to say, yes, uh, you have done it well, but that's not how we should be really doing medicine. What we really should be doing is getting it right, uh, bullseye uh, always, uh, in the place where it should be. And that can be only achieved through guidelines and through a solid knowledge of uh, the, the anatomy. Now we come to a very important point close to my heart, and that's education, training, and certification in both ultrasound and reproductive medicine. And you see, this is the approach we have adopted in our, uh, for, for skills acquisition in our education academy. And this is well, uh, documented and time-tested uh, model for acquisition of skills, starting from novice uh, to becoming an expert in the field and goes through a number of stages from novice to advanced beginner to competency, proficiency, and becoming an expert. And all these steps are underpinned by simulation, by bringing uh, the techniques to the uh, understanding of the individuals, and through practice using simulators. And we even use simulators for exams because it's well recognized in the UK and in many countries that uh, you can be simulation competent, okay, before you go under supervision to practice or work with patients. And therefore you build your proficiency uh, with patients once you have acquired many of the skills using simulation. And that's how we are utilizing technology to underpin the education process in our in, uh, organization. And to conclude, and I hope I'm just on time, uh, it's important or it's, uh, it's important to uh, perform thorough ultrasound assessment after careful history 
and before and during ovulation stimulation cycles. And I would say ultrasound, imaging, MRI are not a replacement for a clinical uh, examination. They are complementary. You need to know what's the history. You need to understand all these things before you decide what is best. It's important to deal with unexpected findings according to current evidence and guidelines and individual patient circumstances. So you look at the patient in, uh, as in a holistic way and, and that's how it works. And then of course, lastly, but not least, is to use the technology available to you to improve the care of your patients, but only if you have trained well. So with that, I thank once more Clinic Minds uh, and Dr. Shahani for his uh, opportunity, for giving me the opportunity to, to um, present to you the recent advances. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Nazar. It was a very insightful session. I would like to uh, keep the session open for the question answers. You can post your questions here in the chat box and I will read them out for Dr. Uh, Nazar to respond. Uh, one question, Dr. Nazar, is please share functional cyst slide again. Uh, would you like to go through that slide? Uh, there's a person yeah. read me. Would you like to identify your name, read me, uh, your real name, uh, uh, and your institution, and your question is, please share functional cis slide again. Okay, I'll share the functional cis slide again, not a problem. Uh, functional, uh, sorry, um, let me go back and share first. Um, are you seeing my slides? And uh, Dr. Nazar, she is Dr. Prajakta Mahajan, who works for the Cradle IVF in Pune. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you seeing my shared screen or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Sorry about that. How is it now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's... Um, let me find my presentation first. Here we go. Can you see the, no, not yet. I don't think you see it um, because I had another. Okay, now you should see the screen and you can see the functional cysts. Okay, so functional cysts are a category of cysts that can be uh, on and off. In other words, they are basically hormonally affected cysts. And you could have a functional cyst when a follicle begins to develop and because of endocrine imbalance in the patient's uh, body, the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis is not working well, the follicle does not burst, does not release the egg, and therefore continues to, to grow. And that, when it becomes to about 35 millimeters and above, it becomes what is called a functional cyst. And very often, you can shrink it by... Uh, by, by um, uh, manipulating the hormones, or if necessary, if it's a progesterone producing functional cyst, then you might have to drain it before uh, IVF fertility treatment. Does that answer your question? Can you hear me? Hello? I can't hear anyone. Can you report? Yes, sir, ju just a minute. I'll unmute. Uh, Dr. Nazar, there is a second part to that question. Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Nazar? Yeah. I can just hear you, yeah. yes. Okay, uh, second part of the question was, what is the most correct method to measure follicle uh, crisscross or single largest diameter? 
Well, that's a $1 million question. I, ha I wish I have an answer to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would be, I am a purist when it comes to uh, techniques. And I would say uh, that you need to take an average of three diameters. And the three diameters are the anteroposterior, right, left, and uh, codocephalic. The, this is the, this is the uh, correct way of measuring an average diameter. However, however, uh, I appreciate that many IVF units are under pressure when they have too many patients, and also that they have uh, difficulty in coping with large numbers over a short period of time. And therefore they do an average of two, but then that creates a problem because some follicles are best seen in a coronal view or other follicles are best seen in the a longitudinal view, so you're not really going to get the consistency of, of, of measurements. And, how, and that's why technology is helping with, um, with, with, with the, for example, the software called Sonar AVC that showed you, I showed you, and therefore the system takes a volume of the ovary and calculates the average diameter electronically for you. And that is actually going to have a combination of accuracy, consistency, because it's a single volume, 3D volume, and all follicles are measured and the diameter is calculated in the same way. So technology comes to the help here. But I have worked in IVF units for many, many years, and I can understand this question arise all the time. Does that so answer that on the uh, Dr. Nazar, the, on the related question, any advice on which USG machine with what basic features to buy we are starting our IVF center? Uh, depends on the manufacturer's offering in the country. Uh, that machine I showed you with a large number of uh, gadgets, uh, AI, uh, Sono AVC, uh, and the cost in the UK was a General Electric GE machine. It's their latest release, September last year, and it has the artificial intelligence. So none of the other manufacturers at the moment offer artificial intelligence embedded in the clinical uh, service. Uh, and that's why I, I am, we're setting up a new clinic and the new clinic will have a diagnostic facility and I'm purchasing that uh, particular make of GE because we want to use it also not just for clinical, but we want to test the hypothesis that AI helps training quicker. And therefore our students in the UK will come and do a simulation scan. And then from simulation scan become competent. They go with patients helped by AI to get the correct diagnostic plane uh, with them. So essentially, we use the spectrum rather than me or Sophie stands behind the students tell me doing this right or not. We, we let the AI do the job for us. Great, thanks. Uh, there's a question from uh, Pradyum. Uh, Pradyum says, sir, please explain some MRI, uh, the harms caused by the MRI actually. Harm caused by MRI, well, uh, MRI actually harmless uh, in a way, uh, certainly in comparison with uh, radiology, radiographic images, CT, because it is based on the principle that the magnetic resonance spins the water molecules in the tissues. And that spinning of the water molecules will give you, will be, you know, will give you the uh, MRI iso intense, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, iso intense or uh, not uh, um, uh, pictures. So really, it's very safe. It's used widely when we have a pregnant woman with problems, and they are uh, they have it as a matter of routine when we have suspicion of placenta accreta or precreta because MRI can tell you how much. Of course, ultrasound is very useful there, but it's increasingly being used for uh, for pregnant women for certain conditions. Of course, not everything. Uh, there's another question from Dr. Marjan. It's a, the artificial intelligence is not much prevalent in India. Uh, throw detail light on its uses in reproductive medicine. Um, well, it's not yet 
well embedded in reproductive medicine. The only artificial intelligence software that I know of embedded in ultrasound machines is where it calculates the uh, follicles for you, uh, mean follicular diameter and volume for you. Uh, but of course, artificial intelligence is going phenomenally quickly into clinical applications. And one of the areas that it's being used is in linking your findings, whether uh, certainly in, in, in other aspects of medicine, linking your findings with actually clinical guidelines that have been drafted by professional bodies. So when you find uh, a combination of results that are fed into the system, the system will tell the clinician that uh, in view of these results, in view of the patient's demographics, we think your patient should be treated in this way. And that's where uh, currently in cancer, uh, the integration of CT and, uh, and other imaging modalities is being fed in this way. Uh, and I know, for example, I sat through a lecture by Siemens last year, uh, and it was in, uh, eye opening for me because they showed how uh, uh, AI is working for the benefit of patients through the clinical guidelines pathway. Thank you, Professor Nazar. There's a request on the follicular monitoring uh, webinar, perhaps in future. Yes, uh, uh, Doctor, we will. We are planning to do some more sort of awareness sessions in the next few months. So yes, we'll keep you informed. Uh, Professor Nazar, just few spend few minutes on the what kind of a training programs which your institution is offering, and uh, you know we would be offering these programs in India uh, for you. Uh, so what are the, if you would like to spend a few minutes on that. Excellent. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity again to talk about our programs. Our Medical and Educational Academy is, and I'm pleased that Sophie, uh, Mrs. Sophie Wong, who is one of the members of our faculty, uh, Kamal, you might have heard that I said Sophie will be joining yes, us. She will be, she will be uh, adding a couple of things as well when we're talking about the training and, and, and uh, uh, supervision and support that we give our students. So our, our, our courses, at the moment we do two, two programs. We run two programs. One is in ultrasound and we have a number of, uh, within the program, a number of courses, uh, and we also have some fertility and reproductive medicine. So in ultrasound, we have a number of uh, courses or modules, and these are compact in a way uh, that gives you, so I'll take you uh, through, I'll share a screen again, if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Um, so share screen, here we go. Um, there we are. Can you see this screen with now? Yes. Yep. So this is, uh, this is essentials of imaging science and technology. We firmly believe that anyone who is using ultrasound must understand the basics, must understand how images are formed and what are the artifacts that you can encounter? What are the, um, what are the uh, procedures that you should do to improve the quality of the image? And of course, safety. So for example, this uh, essentials uh, of imaging science and technology this is a demo uh, module. There's no names in it, etc. But we set the learning outcomes right from the beginning and we give options for two stages of phase one and two, and each phase has a series of lectures, has a series of videos and quizzes. And then there is online discussion. So every student has the opportunity to interact with the whole group of students. And we find that when students talk to each other within the online portal, they learn from each other, as well as it gives them the opportunity, in fact, to go and read about the subject uh, because if they want to contribute, they have to contribute something meaningful and therefore they read about the subject. And, and then of course, after the quizzes, there are assignments and these assignments are short, uh, not too long, 1,250 words, that's about four or five pages, but we want to understand 
the students' ability to synthesize the knowledge available to them, whether from our course material or from the literature as a whole, and put a concise, meaningful uh, understanding of, say, artifacts in ultrasound. And these assignments are marked by the course leader and then feedback given to the student. And all these contribute to the uh, to the overall mark. And of course, there's term two or phase two, similar thing, but the phase two focus is on uh, safety and mechanical bio effects, um, types of transducers, what they do, understanding of Doppler, and then there is an exam at the end of the course. So that's, that's the, uh, the imaging science and technology. The, uh, the, the clinical modules, and we are offering at the moment uh, the, the uh, academic component of the uh, modules. So again, there are learning outcomes, there are loads of uh, images, uh, lectures, and also um, videos showing the delegates, showing the students how to do this. Say, for example, training video. Can you see this? Identification of uterus in sagittal plane. Uh, okay, and then identification of the adnexa, fetal scanning, assessment of fetal viability. So these are videos based on the simulation and, uh, and these are um, tell you uh, how to scan. So for example, I, uh, the simulator that we have and we did a trial on, I was hoping to show you some images from the simulator, but the problem has been that they're doing maintenance work today, but I can show you what you will be able to see from the simulator. So here's the uh, example of assessment of fetal um, viability and um, position. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, so hi, the, the, the videos actually are taking you step by step fully uh, on how to use a simulator place. for scanning and what to see. So, if you have the, um, the, the, the mannequin, next. virtual mannequin so with the uterus, the ovaries, etc. And it shows you the picture of the Please. fetus and the uh, what are the steps you must do right. to, uh, to, to improve and optimize your, your uh, picture. Say, for example, here you need to enlarge and zoom so that you capture the baby uh, in the right position and in the correct plane. So this is available as part of the academic course to every student who joins the course anywhere in the world, okay? So uh, you don't have simulator, but we bring the simulator to you to learn more how to scan. Does that answer a question? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nazar. And shortly, um, we will be sending out the information on the embedded programs to all the participants. And uh, so if anyone would, would like to join, please contact us. And yeah. so thank you. The, 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 clinical, uh, the clinical courses, again, for are, are um, supported. Now, my, my uh, colleague, uh, Sophie, would probably also be able to tell you, we are aiming to start, to start um, regular teaching sessions. So like you saw the video, um, we are linking our simulator through Zoom. So Sophie, would you like to say, uh, to add to what I said about the course and about, um, about uh, the support we give our students. And perhaps, Kamal, you might wish to introduce Yes, so introduce Sophie, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to now introduce Mrs. Sophie Wong. Uh, Sophie is a consultant sonographer, educator, educator and medical and educational academy faculty since 2017. Sophie has worked in the National Health Service, NHS, since 2012 and has qualified in sonography from the University of South Wales. Sophie has special interest in the fetal medicine and in particular fetal cardiac scanning. In the NHS, Sophie is proficient with general abdominal, gynecological and all aspects of obstetric scanning. I welcome you on board, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, guys. Um, Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, just, say, uh, just to add to this talk, very um, informative 
seven hours a day. The course has been very successful. I've seen very many successful students um, attend the course and pass very successfully, and their um, scanning skills are excellent. Um, you know, we do offer um, great support. Um, you know, we're always on hand to answer any questions. We give um, great support with all your um, submissions and all, um, all the learning material. Um, so yes, we um, we uh, have two colleagues who have uh, joined us on the um, on the course and the practice pass and there. Sophie, your off. volume is slow. If you can, your volume of the. Is that a bit better? Yeah, better. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, I was saying a lot of colleagues of mine have joined um, onto the course. A few of our doctors, our trainees, and they've all found it really beneficial. Um, they scanning proficiently and independently on their own in the dining assessment unit. And um, yeah, very impressed with their scanning skills. So it's very successful. I'm very happy to be on the team. Thank you. Thanks, Sophie. Do you have anything else to add? If any questions, please feel free to ask. Another? Uh, uh, I'm just give me one second. I'm trying to log in. The I just had a notice saying the software update has completed. So let okay. me see if I can uh, show you. Prof is trying to log on to the scan trainer, and hopefully we can show you how it works. So I'm logged in. Oh, okay. Somehow, I might have made a mistake in typing, actually. Two L's instead of one. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. There was an echo in the system. That's why I muted oh. myself. Okay, so can you see the screen in front of you? Yes. And here we have the top right, the virtual anatomy and showing where the probe is and the patient on the couch. And you see here the ultrasound image as uh, these images are taken from real scans. So we are able to demonstrate 
uh, a number of uh, characteristics of the fetus. So here we have the fetal head, I can see the planes, I can see the anatomy, I can see. So all our students really uh, have the access to the simulator here, but what we are going, because I know you haven't got simulators, what we're going to do is use uh, sessions, training sessions, where we link for about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, we have a schedule during the year and we demonstrate. So I, I'm, I'm asking Kamal, how is the quality of the ultrasound image at your end? Very clear, absolutely. Maybe Very some more experts could also come in. And, yeah. I am interested in hearing from the delegates if, if they have any comments. Yeah. So here we can manipulate the probe. You can see the probe is moving forward. It's going towards the cephalic end, coming to the uh, synthesis pubis end, see the bladder, see the fetus, see the placenta, all these things we can and will demonstrate during teaching. So you can see a beating heart as well. Some volumes have Doppler in them, so we could see more. And of course, that's not just these, but we have a library of about four or 500 cases, different from, from, from breast to kidneys, to fetus, to um, gynecology. So we could have a series of teaching sessions uh, dependent on who is attending. So we're not just Opsengani, we are Opsengani general medical vascular. We don't have vascular simulation at the moment. There's no vascular simulation to the best of my knowledge. And this simulator has a general medical Opsengani. Uh, can I ask if any of the delegates have used that simulator? Anyone who has, please just um, answer yes to Mr. Shahani, or if not, then what do you think of the picture? And of course, we can measure the uh, various uh, structures. So for example, here, I can show you the fetal bladder and I can show you the uh, femur, and you measure it according to the standard techniques. Any questions? It seems to be a yeah, volume uh, is low. Okay, on the quality of uh, on the quality of image, any comments? And Dr. Ronald, uh, Dr. Ronald said, "No, sir, never use this, but the image is perfect." Yeah. Well, that's very good to hear. What about the uh, smoothness of the flow? Can you, is it jittery or is it as you see a video on YouTube, for example? Not very good on my end. Okay. Well, obviously, um, and Dr. Ronald says smooth image. Yeah. Say it again. Smooth. Dr. Ronald says smooth. S smooth. Okay. Now I have four chats. No, sir, let me use the image is perfect. Okay, that's smooth. Okay, that's very kind of you, Dr. Ronald, to hear that. Um, okay. So of... Any, any other questions that we can, Sophie and I can help or answer? In case you don't have questions, you can always send us the questions on uh, our Clinomines email ID and we can always pass it on to Dr. Nazar to respond. And I, Kamal, I have a few slides on how people, if they are interested in applying to the courses, I have a few slides on that, if that's okay to give uh, it. Sure. In, uh, you, you do have copies of, um, uh, you do have copies of the slides, but I will, 
I will uh, share them just very briefly. Okay, just give me sure. to my to my. Uh, to my So can you see? Yes, we do. Yes, we can. Okay. Can you can you see the screen? Yes. So this is this is the website. When, see, we have a problem with echo. Can we post the link on the chat? Yeah. Okay. It will shut down the other. So uh, the first thing is for interested doctors and uh, visit and, and, and delegates to join the learning community. That's the first step. And once their learning community membership is approved, then we, we give them the access to go through the members logging. And the website is this one, mededacademy.com. And then once they, uh, once they join, they, uh, they go and apply through the members section, you apply for a course. And when you click on this link, it takes you to the application form. It's all online, but you also have the paper form with uh, Clinimines. And then you complete the form section by section, uploading all the uh, relevant paperwork. And we review the application form, send you decision about the application form and then we take it from there that's how the application it all starts by joining our learning learning community and then once approved you go back to members login and complete an application form thank you professor nazar thanks a lot uh, that's that's as simple as it is yeah great i think I we see have that there is yeah. a question about what okay. about the certificate and, and feedback link. So the certification, our courses are uh, accredited by the European Accreditation Council for continuing medical application. And students who complete the academic component, they get a, a professional certificate in diagnostic uh, ultrasound or professional certificate in uh, subfertility and reproductive medicine. So these, if they complete three uh, three courses within the program. The, uh, the advantage of doing three is because it adds hours to be compatible with a certification degree. If you do one course only, you get a certificate which says you've done this course and this course is equivalent to X number of hours studied. So for example, the academic component uh, is, is 60 hours. Uh, in the future, we will be discussing with Clinic Minds how can we uh, support the practical element, but the academic component is 60 hours of study and the exams count towards that as well. So, um, another question is uh, what are the short courses well, for yes, MBBS see, Diploma um, in Gynae? How can you share the site for more info? I've just put the website, and uh, Clinic Minds also have the website, so that should be. Uh, available to you. A question, what are the short courses for MBBS DGO in India? I'm not sure really uh, what's, what the question is. Uh, can you help uh, me? I will explain. Uh, 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 Amrapali, from, would you like from, to explain? Um, Amrapali Gosavi. I don't understand that uh, question. DGO is Diploma in Gynecology. Mm -hmm. 
I'm Ghani and Opson. Uh, so yeah. what is called- We will send the information. Pharma degree students. Uh, we accept students on our courses with healthcare background. We, if you, if you feel you want to choose a career where you do uh, ultrasound or subfertility and reproductive medicine uh, and your institution or your country regulations permit you to that, to do that, uh, we, we have no problem in accepting students with any degree in healthcare. So we have students who are doctors, we have students who are nurses, we have students who are radiographers, all walks of life uh, with a healthcare degree. I mean, there's a big shortage of sonography in the UK and uh, there is a direct route for ultrasound nowadays, whereas in the past it used to be, you must be a radiographer before you become a sonographer. So uh, if you have a degree, a primary degree in healthcare science, a biomedical science, no anatomy, no physiology, no uh, degree about pharmacology and infections, and these are the ingredients to be learning about uh, uh, the ultrasound and... and right. Uh, Dr. Nazar, uh, I'll repeat that question for the MBBS. What's the minimum yeah. qualified for this course? I've just answered that question. Uh, we HV for them means that what courses we have for them, I don't understand. Uh, uh, okay, Nazar, I'll explain. Um, um, hello. I'm Hi. A Hi. Nazar? And what you mean, what courses we have for them. Uh, if you'd like to ask the question again or pass on the question to Clinimides and then I will be very yeah. happy to answer it for you. Na Nazar. Okay, I'm gonna type the, um, the, the, the address again. Not sure, doctor. Um, Here we go. The address is. Yeah, to everyone. Oh, can you hear me? Right, gone. Any more questions? Uh, please send the sign. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Thank you, Nazar. The Any more questions that I can help? Are oh, there still new messages? I can just see them. Um, so what course in ultrasound can be done for me as I'm finished my MBS in Armenia? Well, uh, the imaging science is a mandatory course because every sonographer must understand the background information. So if you want to practice in uh, obstetric ultrasound, then you do the fundamentals of obstetric ultrasound. If you want to do gynae ultrasound, you can do the fundamentals. But on the other hand, you can start with imaging science and one uh, module like obstetric. And then when you complete the two modules, uh, then you can add a, a third. So you will, be, <clears throat> you will be gathering or you'll be accumulating credits and knowledge in, in uh, the different areas. So you need to decide which area of ultrasound you want to practice, or you may want to go to general medical ultrasound. Uh, I have done my um, master's in health science management in the UK. Uh, well, master's in health science management but I, if I understand it correctly, you may or may not have background health sciences primary degree. So do you have a, a primary degree in biomedical or health sciences? Have you studied anatomy? Have you studied physiology? Have you studied pharmacology to a certain extent? So these are the background um, a background uh, knowledge you need to build on to do the ultrasound. Um, we talked about what's called for pharma sectors. Well, uh, that's... Uh, I will... Uh, let's see in radio law. 
imaging, radio imaging. Well, if you have done imaging course, then uh, send us the syllabus and the curriculum that you've studied, and we will be very happy. It looks like you will be suitable to do ultrasound course with us, but send us the information. Okay, 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 I can see that. Yes, so anyone who's done uh, primary background in healthcare sciences, like, as I said, please send us the background. That will all be part of the application process when you submit all your um, uh, qualifications and degrees. Uh, so have you gained something after MSc in radio? Yes, we, we can do the ultrasound if you wish. Uh, can you please send me the email so that I could send me, send me details? Um, I'm not sure really if I understand that. Okay, so there is an email address uh, that came from a person from Dr. Shubham or Mr. Shubham or Mrs. Shubham. I'm sorry if I'm not familiar. Uh, Okay. Well, we can see many uh, emails coming through. Uh, we I'm are sure monitoring the these. Uh, will 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 assemble these emails and expressions of interest during the course. Uh, scope for pharmacy sector and for master in pharmacology. Well, as I said, I think I've answered that question before. Um, more emails coming through. Um, we will be monitoring, Nazar. Our emails and email addresses are coming through. Good. Okay. I'm sure the Clinic Minds team are uh, taking all this information and will action it. We are monitoring these, Nazar. Any more questions? Oh, can you hear me? Hi, Nazar, can you hear me? No, I don't think you can hear us. Nazar, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Nazar, can you hear me? Yes, just about, just about. Did you hear me all when I was talking? Yeah, we did. I, I, I did. It seems that uh, I am having trouble with my sound uh, on Zoom uh, in the parts of this presentation. Uh, so, Nazar, we would be following up on all these things. Uh, we have email IDs of all the participants. But I'm, I, I was hoping that you did hear all the answers that I gave. Yes, to the yes, we yes. Okay, Nazar, right. we did. We are monitoring everything. Yes, okay, we are recording good. also everything. Good, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we have many many email addresses and many uh, expressions of interest. That's really good. And any query, please pass it on to the team at Clear Minds and we will have a follow-up session ourselves and then we respond to everyone accordingly. Thank any you, Nazar. Thank you. Sophie. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the wonderful session. Thank you, Sophie, for your session. Yes, uh, I think you. we are uh, the... Uh, the Clenamines and our, you know, student community here is going to benefit from uh, interaction today and uh, subsequently uh, the programs which we are going to offer here in India uh, along with the MEDET. And uh, thanks a lot for your time, Nazir. Thanks a lot. And uh, glad to be with you. It's a great pleasure to be talking to all the team and the delegates and I'm Thank glad. You. I'm glad we've been helpful. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Nazar. You have a nice day ahead and have a nice weekend. Thank you, Sophie. Have a nice weekend. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye.